Good afternoon. I'm Carlos Fernandez, Policy Analyst at the Vegas Chamber. I'd like to thank you all for tuning into What Businesses Need to Know webinar with Chairwoman of the Clark County Commission, Marilyn Kirkpatrick, and with the Vegas Chamber President and CEO, Marilyn Sewell. Mary Beth Seawald. Before we get started, I want to take a moment to explain some features of this call. In order to preserve high sound quality, we're we'll muting everyone on the call besides decides some presenters to make it easy for everyone to hear. If you'd like to ask a question, there are a few ways you could do so. If you're joining this call on the web or through the mobile app, you can ask a question by using the chat feature on the interface. We'll ask you a question on your behalf. You can also ask a question by clicking the hand raise button on the interface. We'll call your name and unmute your line so you can ask a question. Once you have asked your question, we'll read me your line so everyone on the call can hear the answer. And to preserve time, we ask that you please keep questions brief and we'll be taking all questions at the end of the call. Now, please welcome the Vegas Chamber President CEO, Mary Beth Seawald. Thank you, Carlos. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Friday afternoon. I want to thank you for joining us today. Um, this is just a reminder that today is a call. We're using the call feature only, um, so it's audio only today and not video. So if you're looking for video, don't think anything is wrong. We're just audio only today. So thanks again, everybody, for joining us as we partner with the Nevada Business Information Network um, for this webinar with Clark County Commission Chair Marilyn Kirkpatrick. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, we are thrilled to have you on today and just want to make a couple of quick announcements before we um, advance our conversation with you today. Um, the Vegas Chamber is going to host another webinar on June 1st with State of Nevada Labor Commissioner Shannon Chambers. So you don't want to miss that. Please visit VegasChamber.com for more information there. Uh, also want to let you know about uh, know that applications for the Vegas Chamber's Leadership Las Vegas program are open. It's a 10-month program and it gives it really gives a deeper understanding of our Southern Nevada area so that you can become more insightful and effective as a community leader. So applications are due on June 11th and so you should go to leadership.vegas to apply for that. And now, uh, Madam Chairwoman, Marilyn Kirkpatrick, thank you again for joining us on the call today. Thank you, Mary Beth, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity um, to um, get in front of the business community, not only to tell them you know, how important um, this phase two is, but to take as many questions as possible to help uh, alleviate some concerns. Um, first and foremost, what I will tell you is Business has been great. I know the guidelines came out late yesterday. Um, however, many businesses were calling the proper agencies and asking for some guidance on what they could expect. And that goes a long way to seeing what type of community that we are and that we know how important it is. Um, for myself, I really, really want to stress the importance of the social distancing and the compliance uh, with the regulations. And I want to explain to you how the regulations are come up, uh, how we come up with those um, each and every time. Uh, first, uh, what we do is we ask for plans from different industries to say, hey, what is it that you're thinking? What would your plan look like? We then go through those. We look for common um, commonality on all of them. Then we research 10 states across the country and we see um, what they've done um, and some of their best practices are. And then from there, what we do is we look at their phases, how they've opened, have they seen any spikes? And then after we've done that, I go to the World Health Organization and I look through their IPP um, professional websites to see what they're looking at nation uh, worldwide. Then I send them, I put them in a format and I send them to the health district. And then we get uh, our epidemiologist and our EH division to look at them. And then we send them to the governor's office. So each one of the regulations, public health comes first, uh, the guidance, the best practices, um, know that there's a lot that goes into it, and we're not trying to be different from any other um, group across the country, but we are trying to learn from uh, their mistakes or things that they didn't see happen. And um, we have been successful in phase one. We did not see an uptick. Um, so going into phase two, what I can tell you already today, I, I have some areas of concern with them different industries and um, they are not doing social distancing they are not taking the reservations and i fear that uh, we could go backwards 
So what I'm asking all of you as businesses, please, please, please um, help ensure that your employees are safe and they're wearing their PPE and they're washing their hands on a regular basis, but then your customers hold them accountable um, to following the rules because what happens in phase two can really set the tone for where we go all the way through this. Um, secondly, I want to point out that um, we got a grant from the federal government for $88 million, and that grant requires that we test 2% of our population for the next uh, year. So we'll be seeing testing going on um, throughout the year, so we'll be able to manage it um, on a day-to-day, -day, week to week, month to month basis. So if you have employees that want to be tested, please send them to any of the sites that are out there. There's no cost um, out of pocket to any of the employees. Um, the health district is 100% uh, free. Um, so please utilize that. It's a universal testing location. We will have to continue to do it in order to meet the federal criteria. But really, that's um, the basic of what I'm asking is that you all help me keep us moving forward. Um, we still have hundreds of businesses that we have to get back on track. That would be conventions, that would be buffets, that would be um, our inter live entertainment possibilities. Um, so we have a long ways to go, but phase two is really going to show us as we put a little over a million people back together, um, what that's gonna look like for our future. So with that, Mary Beth, I really am happy to take as many questions as people wanna ask um, so that I can address their concerns. And you guys have been a great partner, so I anticipate that you're gonna to continue to be a great partner. Well, thank you, um, Chairwoman Kirkpatrick. You've been a great partner and we appreciate all your service and your work. I know you've been working nonstop since this whole thing started. And so uh, you've been a true leader and we appreciate, you know, everything you've done for, for our communities. Um, having said that, you talked about the timeline and, and phase two and things like that. And I'm sure your answer is gonna be, it depends on, you know, whether we're able to keep the, the, keep the testing going and keep the cases down. Is there any kind of a timeline for how long you think phase two might last before we can go to phase three? Um, I I really, so here's what I'll tell you is the current process that we, uh, the LEAP team has with um, the governor's office is we are on uh, three days a week, we're on testing calls, so we get real-time numbers on what we're seeing as the growth rate, what the hospitalization is, and how many of the tests uh, we are running. And so, one, we know if we're running short on tests, and then we have to go out and try and get more people to test so we can see. What I would tell you, by next Friday, we'll be able to start seeing what happened from the last week of phase one. Um, we are already working on the next set of directives that we think need to be considered um, into the process. But I could anticipate that phase two could go just a little bit longer or actually go the full 14 days because we really do have to have a good idea on what that looks. So phase three is typically uh, large gatherings over 250 and we want to be mindful of uh, what that looks like before we go there and we want to have a really good handle on going into the fall um, for our community. Okay, so so you're looking to not emulate what they did in at Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri over the last few days. <laughs> That's correct, and some of my pools are already being bad actors today. So, uh, well, I was going to ask you about that. You said, folks, there are some that are areas of concern, industries. You said something about not taking reservations or requiring their uh, patrons to wear the masks and so forth. Can you elaborate on that? Um, yeah, so um, I will tell you that um, grocery stores are a big concern these days. We're seeing that uh, they were great in the very beginning, um, keeping up, but now it's a hit and miss on whether people are wearing face coverings, uh, the employees, whether they are 
uh, putting wearing gloves, moving all the shopping carts around. There's not any sanitizer anymore, and I understand that's because people were stealing it, but there's got to be something that we could do. Um, so they're, they're a large concern because uh, the grocery stores are kind of all over the board today. Um, secondly, uh, you know, the reason for the reservations is so that we don't have uh, large groups of non-family members uh, standing together, breathing together. And so I can tell you already today I've received 25 calls about Kawabunga, how unorganized that it was. And my conversation yesterday with many of the local governments are no need to rush if you're not ready because shutting back down is, um, very hard to do. I have personally been calling some of the taverns myself and saying, you know, we need to do a better job. Some of the outdoor malls we've had some issues with. Um, and really, the six foot um, has been very successful for us. And we're lucky to be able to do it. Some other states cannot uh, do that just because of the makeup of how they are. Um, so I'm hoping that some of those industries will be mindful of that. People have been uh, willing to give us a new plan uh, if they're not complying with it. So I'm just hoping that continues, but understand that we opened a lot more businesses this time than phase one. So it's concerning. Okay, great. And you mentioned the $88 million uh, in federal grant money. Um, and you talked about requiring to do the tests for 2% of the population over the next year and so forth. And I'm sorry if I missed that, missed it. Did you specify what those dollars are going for exactly or? So um, just so folks understand, the cost of testing is more than just the test itself. It's the manpower that you need to uh, put that together. The National Guard was extended through June. Um, which has been a phenomenal help. It's over 200 of them in Clark County, but there is a lot of uh, manpower that goes into the testing as well as the contact tracing. Um, so those dollars will go um, predominantly to ensure that labs can run um, that. We all remember that just a little over two and a half months ago, we were only able to run 40 tests statewide per day, and today we are uh, running about 7,000 tests statewide. So um, a, a lot of that cost goes into ensuring that manpower is available. Okay, and that grant is for the entire state then, the $88 million? It, it is, but Southern yeah. Nevada will see the bulk because I'm always fighting for Southern Nevada, and we have the <laughs> largest population, and my rural friends understand that. So. Okay, very good. Um, our churches, this is a question from our, our listeners today, are churches 50 people or 50% capacity? Churches are um, consistent with other things um, out there, such as movie theaters. I've heard of a lot of complaints that they weren't consistent. So it is 50% uh, capacity up to 50 people. That is consistent with any of the indoor venues. Um, altogether and so there is a lawsuit so I um, really don't want to dwell into the details of it but um, you know we have to be mindful of um, the public health component okay perfect uh, this person asks, can you discuss your outreach to the senior community I have noticed seniors seem to be ignoring face masks especially in grocery stores as you mentioned a minute ago so we so currently today statewide we have um, we're testing all of the assisted living facilities as a whole um, just so every um, folks understand um, that's all of our um, assisted living senior centers that's um, our different uh, special ed um, population so we are doing all of that and that needs to be done by June first. Um, we are um, reaching out to our seniors in particular um, in many of the different senior communities. Um, so we are actually going to start some testing there. We've been doing some high-level education to why the mask makes a difference. Um, but there are folks just 
philosophically that agree to disagree whether or not they should wear one, but we're seeing if you're not wearing it for yourself, wear it for somebody else. And so uh, we will see a large uh, mass campaign start in our community the second week of June. And, you know, there's ways to make it fun. There's ways to um, ensure that people actually have them. So uh, 16,000 are going to come uh, to United Way who will be handing those out to seniors and our most vulnerable. So uh, we are doing our best to educate them. But in like in anything, there are just some folks that are resistant. Yeah, all the chambers are are very, uh, you know, looking forward to working with United Way. I know the Vegas Chamber is. We're set to get a shipment of masks, along with your posters that you made available to us. So thank you for that, because we're working very hard to educate the public with those posters that you provided. And then also the chambers, Urban, Latin, Henderson, will all have um, those masks as well. So, um, and we're looking forward to that campaign. Right. Um, let's see. Okay. A couple of times I've gotten this question. Who can uh, folks contact if they have questions about the phase two guidance? So Clark County, um, because it's very uh, confusing on the governor's website, because if you've noticed on the governor's website, there are different level. I mean, it's a timeline and everything is posted. So Clark County yesterday just posted the guidelines on our website in an easy click with an icon that should be done by the close of business today uh, so that people can go right to them. But they can always call our office. We're super um, helpful when it comes to that. And our number is 702-455-3504. Um, if they're looking for some specific, specific questions. Sorry. Okay. We're getting a lot of concern about uh, businesses and, and how they can enforce the mask wearing, kind of like the no shirt, no shoes, no service type of thing. Is the county going to issue any guidelines of how businesses should deal with customers who refuse to comply with the masks and spacing? So um, what I would tell you is I um, there is that conversation being had with the attorney general's office at this point um, to see if they're... Um, what is that um, for a variety of reasons? So one, we need to have the attorney general's office talk about that for whether it's enforcing the mask, whether it's enforcing the test or enforcing the quarantine. So that conversation is being had. I don't anticipate um, the county being able to do it because I heard very clearly from your businesses that if we required it, that you wanted us to provide police protection and I do not have the dollars to do that. Okay, very good. Um, one of our members is wanting to know if there's any consideration for outdoor employees like golf courses and so forth. Consideration for what? For um, masks or um, requirements there to wear. So there's there's already a requirement that all employees wear a mask and that has been pretty clear throughout this whole process. So yeah. there is concern though, what I would tell you is um, there is concern that it's hot outside. Yesterday was 107. Should we get them, for, uh, make their mask more readily available? Do they need a second one halfway into their shift? Uh, do people need the ability to go to a private place to take it off uh, during their shift. There are all of those. And so OSHA has addressed some of that and required um, PPE be provided. Um, but I think that there's some ways that we can uh, work through it. What I've told a lot of people that are outside is the bandanas probably work the best, which we've been doing that practice for a hundred years. If you were a landscaper or a construction Worker um, bandanas allow you to breathe um, uh, out, but it doesn't allow you to project, right? So um, I think folks can be creative on some of the things that they try. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that because we're getting a lot of texts about it so uh, and a lot of messages and questions just to clarify that it does apply to people working outside, but the bandanas are sufficient, you're saying? Correct. Yep. Okay. 
Um, can you uh, tell us a little bit more about the LEAP, uh, purpose of the LEAP, and, and what is this group responsible for? So the LEAP, uh, so we, uh, so it started out as we were trying to work with the governor's office on how did we get started on phase one. And um, we had a conversation, there was another state that had a local group that were more um, boots on the ground that could be hearing things. So um, we've, we've all volunteered to be part of the LEAP. So it's myself, JJ Gokachia from the rural areas and Dagny from NACO, and we brought Bob Lucy from Washoe aboard, but we also have Mike Brown, Michael Brown, and we have Terry Reynolds, and we have Scott Gillis um, as part of our team. And so initially we were uh, required to do some testing to ensure that the community testing started and that we helped create some regulations. And so we are a recommending committee, so we sit on a testing call, we sit on a the NACO calls, we've tried to include the cities um, in our calls once every two weeks so that we're all working together. But we put, as I explained early on in the conversation, we put those uh, recommendations together and then we send them to the governor's office and we plead our case on why we feel that they should or should not open. And then we stay on top of the testing um, every other day to ensure that it continues to move forward. Okay, um, questions back on that testing again. Um, <clears throat> are there any places that you would recommend over others or I know Walmart has started testing, things like that, drive-through. Um, can you speak to that a little bit about what you'd recommend for testing? So what I would tell you that all of the testing is coordinated statewide. So um, in the beginning, we had a lot of fly-by-night companies coming here trying to make some money off of uh, Nevadans, so we, they are now all regulated through the state. So anybody that is doing testing um, has a state business license and they fall within our state parameters. So I can tell you it really depends on what you're looking to do. So if you're already not feeling well, you can go to your primary care doctor that, that um, is more comfortable for some, the health district has them open all the time. The drive throughs are probably our most successful um, because you can make an appointment and you can go right through it. So there is a calendar on the Southern Nevada Health District uh, website and that should coordinate all of the different testing uh, locations. So we anticipate that some of these will be permanent, but really we're trying to stay close to your neighborhood so it's easy and convenient and there's no long wait. So what we have out there today, they're all um, a big partner of the state, so you can't go wrong. It just is what your comfort level is. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, this person says, I own a local union production company. How will these new guidelines affect stagehands working on booths? So what I would tell you that there is, um, we don't have any guidelines yet. Um, I can tell you that um, I hope that we don't have to follow the national trend. The national trend is saying that there will be no uh, live uh, conventions, live entertainment through 2021. I, I believe we can do better. We've always been able to be uh, above everybody else in the country. So. I look forward to you uh, sharing your plans on what you think could work. Um, that is why phase two is so important to ensure that we can get to these other phases and start bringing back our conventions and start bringing back our live entertainment um, venues. So we don't have an answer yet. It is on our mind. Um, we are concerned on what that looks like and we surely, um, disagree with some of the other um, states that are saying that those venues should go away to the end of 2021. So we'd like to see them, we'd like to be prepared for them no later than fall. Okay. Uh, next question is, CVS started testing, but they said I am not eligible. Do you know what they mean by being eligible? Quote. I do not. I don't know a lot of CVS that are testing in Southern Nevada. I know that they're doing a lot in Northern Nevada, but 
everybody should be eligible, but um, somebody can send me that location. I'm happy to look into it because everybody is 100% eligible. Okay, yeah, that's the first I've heard of that as well. So perhaps whoever sent that question to us will let us know which CVS it is, or they could reach out to us and we can get that to you as well. Okay. So, um, next question is, are we doing contact tracking and who is handling that? So we actually have a very robust statewide contact tracing. So in um, so that is part of that $88 million that came down from the federal government. Um, so there's a statewide contracting, contacting uh, tracing uh, program that will be initiated um, consistently across the state. So part of it will be an app, part of it will be uh, workers that will follow up on those calls. Today in Southern Nevada, we um, partnered with the WIN and we've been utilizing about 100 of their call center folks to um, call all of the negatives and to find out some other social service stuff. We have about 60 Southern Nevada Health District folks that are calling through on the positives and following up with that case management side, but we probably have one of the more robust uh, contact tracing programs in the country. Um, so you'll see the app will roll out again, and all of this is good for other um, infectious diseases. So it's been an opportunity for us to really step up our game on that. So we're we're doing a great job. Okay, this person did get back to us on which location uh, the CBS is. It's the one on Desert Inn and Fort Apache. Okay. I will find that out today, Mary Beth, and I will get you that information. Okay, great. Um, next question is, uh, what happens if the infection rate increases and goes above 10%? At that point, would we move back to phase one or phase zero, or what other factors will you be looking at? So we we anticipate a surge. Uh, we're realistic. We anticipate a surge. Um, what I can tell you today is the surge. Uh, so our contract, our our rate in Clark County is a 5.3 percent. We'd have to see several hundred people uh, test positive with very little testing being done to see that huge increase. Um, statewide, we're at 6.3% as of today, um, but we are watching those numbers every single day. Our hope is that we can, so we've been tracking, building models, and we will be able to catch it before it rises. So for instance, Prior to phase one, we were at 1.6% growth rate. So that means for all the testing that we were doing, uh, we were seeing about a 1.6% people testing positive. Uh, within the first week after um, phase one opened, we went up to about 1.9%, and we also started testing our senior facilities. So we'd have to see a large spike um, overnight in our growth rate and if that did happen we believe that we could um, isolate the issue very quickly that is our plan that is why we continue these daily calls um, and the three days a week calls so I'm crossing my fingers that we don't have to that we will not see a growth rate higher than four percent at any given time but we are prepared should we, um, but that's why our tracing is um, a cut above the rest of the country. That's why we have a little bit higher standards than everybody else because it is detrimental to our state uh, more so than many because of the reliance on tours that we have to be a little more stringent with our roles to, okay. to ensure the safety. One person is asking if the fashion show mall was allowed to open today. Yes, they are. Um, they have some guidelines, so their retailers have to comply with the retail guidelines that were set out in phase one. They are to um, stop all of the areas where large groups could congregate 
Um, they do have a couple of questions out. Normally they have some music that plays. We're not sure that um, that's a good idea at this point. Um, recently just had a call with all of the malls. Um, it was very hard. We, we made the case that if you're gonna open the venues with inside the casinos, you should open the venues um, outside of the casinos Casino. as well and to keep the social distancing parameters. But all of this is hinging on, you know, everybody doing their part. Right. Okay. This person is having trouble uh, enforcing this with their employees. It says, Who's, who do I call or what do I do if employees are not wearing masks? The county or the health district? I have seen, oh, okay, this is not their own employees. This is other folks' employees when they're going out. It says, I've seen workers only covering their mouth and not their nose. So you're um, more than happy to, you can always call our office. Um, you can call the health district. You can call any of the three, right? Or business licensing. Uh, the health district has been very quick to go out and educate um, employees on the proper way to wear a mask. Um, and honestly, many folks have masks that don't fit correctly, so it's not helpful. So any one of the three are out and about every single day. Um, ensuring that um, people are keeping up, but understand that we've now opened up approximately 30,000 businesses in a month. It's very easy to shut down, but I will tell you it's very hard to stand up all at once. So you can call any one of those uh, business licensing, you can send an email, you can call our office. Um, what I would ask is the information that you have is what the name of the business was, what time did you see it about and was it more than one employee that we're not doing it those would be the three questions that uh, I would ask you so that we could um, what we're finding with managers it really depends on who was on what shift it really depends on if all the employees were just um, not complying um, and so we want to make sure we have as much information as possible Okay. And I encourage people to do that all day long, report employees. Okay. Do you know, is testing being done at rehab rehab facilities or public health clinics? Next question. And they are being done, yes. Um, that is uh, part of the statewide initiative across um, the area. We have 14 strike teams in Southern Nevada um, that are going out. So there's about 450 facilities that needed to be done, um, then detention centers will be right behind it. So we anticipate by July 1st, all of those will have be done as much as all of our rural communities as well. Okay. Do you anticipate any kind of screening at the airport for travelers, questionnaire, temperature check, or anything else? So we have been in conversations with our congressional delegation, and there definitely is that conversation happening. Um, however, we don't anticipate it being able to start before the end of uh, summer. Some of that has to do with putting in some regulations, making sure that the temperature check is calibrated correctly, ensuring that the airports have a location for people to go should they have a high temperature, but we do anticipate um, in the fall that becoming a regular part of the process. Okay. Is the county doing any physical inspections of business in regard to social distancing and mask wearing? Yes, so we, um, under phase one, we had well over 2,000 across the valley uh, inspectors out. Um, from all different agencies, OSHA, Southern Nevada Health District, the police department, business licensing, um, across the valley. Um, each city had them out. The state uh, licensing boards had folks out. And we, um, we start out with educating folks first because we always want to give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, so we do that twice, and on the third time, they may get a written notification that they have to make a change. Um, and so we we really try to, this is a new thing for all of us, right? So we're just trying to educate folks 
to ensure that they know, And but if it continues to be a problem, then they could be subject to a citation at some point. Okay, and speaking of education, I'm getting a couple of questions about about your posters, and I know we have a, a pretty large supply of them here at the Vegas Chamber, um, and other chambers have them as well. Are there any other locations or places that folks could get these posters so they could post them in their bu business? Um, I don't. I work specifically with the chamber on those. Um, I know that you can go on the CDC and print off some PowerPoint type posters. Um, that you can have, that's what we did with some of the county um, facilities. Uh, but I don't, I don't have any other locations except for maybe the CDC, but they're free at the chamber. We used our CARES dollars um, under the business component to partner with the chamber to get these out. So I encourage people to come and get them. Yes, we do too. We have curbside drop off here at the chamber. Um, you were talking about music just a moment ago. We got a question about, uh, I think you were talking about live music. This person is asking, can restaurants play background music or is that not allowed at this time? No, I believe that that is allowed um, because it's more about the ambiance as opposed to selling a ticket and falling under live entertainment. Right, okay. Um, okay, if a business is following CDC guidelines, the state's phase one reopening requirements and local government ordinances, what other suggestions would you recommend to them to protect themselves, their employees, and their customers? Anything I'm else sorry, besides Mary Beth, we repeat that? Because you lost me halfway through it, so try okay. me again. Sure, no problem. If a business is following all the guidelines, right, you've got CDC, you've got the state's phase one reopening requirements, we've got phase two now, lo local government ordinance and so forth. Are there any other suggestions that you would recommend to our business members to protect themselves, their employees and their customers? Anything besides what we already have in terms of the guidelines? Well, I think as far as policy wise, you're really in a great spot. Um, as far as you know, ensuring that you're following the latest and up-to-date guidelines, what I would tell you is, um, crazy enough, for the health district, one of the things that businesses have always hated about the health district is being written up for hand washing. And what I what I always say to folks is, educate your employees to be consistent. So um, you know, you get a new manager; they're not. Um, they're not keeping up with the same rules, they're not right, running such a tight ship, or their coworkers, you know, um, just keep consistency throughout the day, throughout the time frame, because it's that one employee um, that, you know, somebody may see that didn't wash their hands, that creates the bigger problem for everybody, but consistency, I, I like to retrain folks within my office once a week, what did you see this week? Here, don't forget, we're washing hands, wearing masks, we have to have gloves. Um, so I would just say a constant reminder of um, what the protocols are will be probably your best avenue. And okay. we all know that after three weeks, it's a habit. Right, exactly. Getting a question about smoking, um, can the county ban smoking or is that a legislative matter? That, that is a legislative matter for, um, with the Clean Door Act, uh, Act that was passed one, uh, twice by the voters and then it was amended by the legislature. So that is 100% a legislative function um, before that can change. All right, great. Well, um, Chairwoman Kirkpatrick, we really appreciate your time today. We're, we're about out of time and uh, I, I really appreciate all your work. Again, you've been a great partner with the Vegas Chamber and we appreciate all you're doing and uh, we appreciate all the updates today. It's been extremely informative. Thank you so much. All right, thank you and stay safe so we can stay open. So appreciate you guys. All right, very thank good. And thanks, thanks to everybody for uh, joining us today on the webinar. Have a great rest of your day and a great weekend. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye. Thank you, bye-bye.